girl. All we need for you to do is talk it's to us for five just minutes. Don't stay... hey, look, hold on, girl. We want to do it. In honor of The Wire's 20-year anniversary, I wanted to highlight my top oh shit moments from the show. Move, shit bird. I mean, moments that literally surprised us, shocked the shit out of us, literally made us look at the television and say, oh shit. I mean, this is an oh shit moment. Price of the brick going up. Yes. more. And who could forget this one second clip of my man Rawls at the male titty bar? This one second scene is definitely an oh shit moment. This shit came out of left field. David Simons handled that shit brilliantly. It was never revisited, never mentioned. Shit, there was nothing said about it to this day. And I think it's fucking brilliant. He just planted the seed in all of our heads that Rawls might be dead. Which is Rawls' preference? I don't give a fuck. I just think it's hilarious. And it's definitely an oh shit moment. Anyway, y'all, there's tons of these moments throughout the wire. I've done my best to narrow it down to my top five favorite oh shit moments. If you fucking with the list or you think there's a scene I missed that should be there, get in the comment section. I look forward to chopping it up with all y'all. And like always, big rich, like, subscribe, notifications, help the channel out, all that good shit. And real shit, if you've already subscribed, thanks so much for giving me a chance. Now here are my top five oh shit moments from The Wire. Now let's go. Season four is some of The Wire's best work. And this shit here came completely out of left field. Yeah, Homegirl teased her earlier in the episode, but they really didn't make much of it. They reacted and that was it. And honestly, I thought the situation, <laughs> and honestly, I thought the situation was done. She snuck that blade in the school. Also, good to see them metal detectors working. She snuck that blade in the school. She slit homegirl shit down to the white meat. <laughs> Season four brings back so many childhood memories. This shit brought me back to high school. Born and raised in Queens, Whenever some shit popped off, this is exactly how it would be. But I ain't never seen nobody's shit sliced open like this in high school. First time watching this, I damn near jumped out my seat. And then for her and Daquan to have this weird ass, awkward ass connection as she's sitting there. The shit definitely had an eerie ass feeling if you ask me. My man Presbolewski thought being a cop was hard. Presbo had his hands full with this class. <laughs> no lie. No, 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 what you do, what you do? First off, Bubbles killing Sherrod by accident is an oh shit moment in itself. No, 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 what you do? What you do? What you do? Oh, man, come on, Javon. You mother supposed to do this, man. But what came next was even more shocking than that. Bubbles came in with a heavy heart, ready to confess for the part he played in Sherrod's death. When's the last time you had your medicine? No. No, I'm not getting high anymore, okay? Bubbles being so hurt and in so much pain, he fucks around and pukes on Jay. If you're saying, oh, fuck. I'm sorry. Shit, he got like a And when Jay Bird came back to that room and we all saw Bubbles' feet dangling, ah, oh, the pain I felt. First off, Bubbles is a character we already felt bad for. And let's keep it a buck, we all fucked with Bubbles. Get up there. Come on, come on, come on! <laughs> Bubbles was a crackhead junkie, whatever you want to call him, but he had good in him. He had good intentions. He wasn't malicious, he wasn't fucked up.
He wasn't like John and all the other junkies on the street. And Sherrod gave Bubbles life purpose. He was like the stepdad to this kid. He took care of him, tried to get him in school. What grade were you in last year, dear? Uh, he, he kind of lost his way some time ago. He's living with me now. I fucked with Bubbles. And for Jay Bird to basically save his life and then let him go on top of it? Let's throw this one back. What about the clearance? Still short 900. I can go with that no time. This is probably the most surprising death and one of the most satisfying in the whole series. Is that fucked up to say? I mean, this shit really did come out of left field, though. I mean, with this shit, there was no foreshadowing. Nothing new. And the way I went into this shit was, well, Slim ain't pushing the issue. Meaning no disrespect. But I ain't cut out to be no CEO. <laughs> Ain't nobody else really stepping up for Joe. I was like, God damn, I'm halfway through the finale and Cheese is gonna make it to the end. This is fucked up. Then Slim Charles came through and did us all a favor. But now, nigga. Shit, I wish there was a way to bring Cheese back so he could have died twice, to be honest with you. But now, nigga. Cheese was definitely the grimiest character in the entire series. You got fret on by Oma. I mean, the way the shit went down was brilliant. Cheese pulls his gun on Fat Face Rick. Yeah, nigga, we was good when your uncle had it. We had to go in and put up a Marvel. Then Cheese proceeds to give one of the hardest speeches of the entire series. Ah, oh, that there's no nostalgia to this shit? It's fucking genius. You gonna stand there crying that back in the day shit. Jeez. There ain't no back in the day, nigga. Ain't no nostalgia to this shit here. And then for Slim Charles to put one in him, right as Cheese is about to hit the climax of his speech. <laughs> when it was my uncle, I was with my uncle. When it was Marlo, I was with him. But now, nigga, Then for Slim Charles to drop one of the hardest quotes in TV history. That was for Joe. That was for Joe. I felt that shit. I know homie right here gave no fucks at all. All he cared about was the money. <laughs> what the fuck you do that for? Now we short the nine. But to this day, I still think him calling Slim Charles sentimental is funny as shit. The man who just committed Murder in cold blood is sentimental. This sentimental motherfucker just cost us money. What I wouldn't give to be in your shoes right now. This is definitely the funniest oh shit moment on the list. Herc walking in on the mayor getting topped off. I literally said oh shit the first time I saw this. Fuck, don't you lock the door. You would have thought the mayor was home, comfortable, no kids in the house, door wide open. How fucking hard is it to go and lock the door? And then for dumb, dumb Herc to spill the beans to Valchek. You go back down to the hall. You act like it never happened. You shut up. You say nothing to no one. The mayor, he's going to... He's gonna watch and see how you carry it. I can't lie, Valchek was a grimy fuck. I kinda fucked with him. I liked how he threw his power around to get what he wanted. I ain't gonna lie. And you give Valchek some ammo like this? <laughs> oh, oh, what I wouldn't give to be in your shoes right now. <laughs> Kid, careers have been launched on a hell of a lot less. Bro, if that was me, and I walked in on the mayor getting topped off, I would have been police commissioner in a month. Herc saw that shit and he was scared. Not me. <laughs> Homegirl was slobbing on the knob. And here comes Herc, fucking it up. Hey, 
talking to Derek. Who killed Derek? The oh shit moment of oh shit moments. I know you're probably expecting a scene from Avon. Pardon? Shit, Marlo. Maybe even Omar. But y'all are wrong. When it comes to oh shit moments, there's one name and one name only. Prez Beluski. Move, shitbird. He was the ultimate fuck up, but he grew on me. Hated him the first half of season one, but once we got to episode six or seven, every episode after that, he grew on you a little bit. Move, shitbird. Jesus. He made up for his early fuck up. Fast forward to season three, and this is a scene that doesn't get talked about enough. Who would have thought going on a Chinese food run would fuck around and be the last night on the force? Every time Presbo's out in the field, he fucks up somehow, some way. He found his lane. He found what he was good at. That's his ass in the office solving puzzles and shit. That's what Presbo is good at. So 714-3432 is 396-7678. Our number. McNulty and Presbo get the call and they're on the hunt. Sure as shit, Presbolewski corners the man, lets two off, and kills the perp. And then the oh shit moment of oh shit moments take place. And for Presbolewski to find out he killed an undercover officer, It's Derek. Jesus Christ. Who killed Derek? I was fucking speechless the first time I saw this shit. Thinking to myself, finally, Presbolewski showed some initiative in the field. He finally did something right. Just for McNulty to pull out the fucking badge. Greg's. Press another cop. What? I can't lie, just like Bubbles, I felt bad for Presbo. Valchek comes in and tries to handle the situation for his son-in-law, but at this moment, there ain't a fucking thing Valchek can do. And then for Daniels to go in and talk to him and put him on suicide watch for the night. Oh man, that shit was powerful, fucked up, and honestly, one of the more shocking moments of the wire. Get in the comment section, let me know. Did I get it wrong? Because I know a lot of y'all forgot about this shit. Season three had some fucking bangers and this was one of them. So get in the comment section, let me know what you think. Like always, Big Rich, just having fun with it and that's my top five old shit moments from the line. Hit that subscribe button and if you're fucking with it, check out some of the other work, yo. We got tons more Wire content on the way. See y'all next time.